My name is Mike, and I'm going to present a paper called Autosys, and this is a joint work between Microsoft Research, Peking University, USTC, Microsoft Bing Platform, and Microsoft Bing Ads. So learning augmented systems are systems whose design methodology or control logic is at the intersection of traditional heuristics and machine learning algorithms. These systems are no stranger to academic communities. And um, over the years, many efforts leverage machine learning to address system challenges. And we see this in database communities and also in uh, networking communities, right? for example. There are also various workshops and conferences on this particular topic. And uh, in this particular work, we're going to report our years of uh, experience in designing and operating learning augmented systems at Microsoft. Spe specifically, this presentation covers our autosys framework and long-term operation lessons. So as we know, right, there are various applications of learning augmented systems. Many people use it for auto scaling uh, or try to debug the systems. But in this particular paper, we focus on auto tuning system configuration parameters. And um, the problem of auto tuning parameters is simple in some sense. Right? You can imagine it as a block box optimization. As the figure shows, you simply view the system as a block box and adjust the configuration parameters with respect to the performance counters that you observe. Right. And then hopefully that eventually you're going to uh, you're going to optimize the performance counters. And these performance counters can include latencies or CPU uh, utilizations. Right. But for a simple problem like this, it's actually very difficult for system operators in practice. First, the configuration space can be vast. And uh, with uh, system-specific parameter constraints and dependencies, such as value type and range. Second, different systems experience different dynamics, which means that auto-tuning optimizations need to happen continually and as necessary. So with learning augmented system design, our goal is to use machine learning as the tool to deal with these two problems. So throughout our discussion, we are going to illustrate learning augmented systems with Bing Web Search as an example. Web Search is architecturally representative of modern systems with fundamental building blocks of networking, application logic, and also data stores. Specifically, we look at five engines in the search pipeline. First of all, there is the selection service. Right? So given a user search query, the selection service uh, is going to fetch relevant documents from the web index. And it does so by, have, by, by hosting two engines, right, the keyword-based engine and also the semantics-based engine. So we auto-tune both engines to optimize the search relevance. Second, given documents from the selection service, the ranking service then ranks these documents with machine learning models. These machine learning models uh, can be gradient boosted decision tree, or as we know, GBDT. And our job is to auto tune the GBDT uh, model hyperparameters such that we improve the ranking uh, performance. And finally, uh, the, the re-ranking service adds additional content 
to the search results. Right? And then uh, uh, these can be from sources such as news articles or multimedia contents. We auto tune key value stores to reduce lookup latencies. And uh, these key value stores can be open sourced uh, uh, key value stores such as RocksDB, or it can be in house solutions such as MLFT. So, when we first started auto tuning web search years ago, we actually built vertical solutions for each scenario. Then we soon realized that moving towards a unified framework for building learning augmented systems would actually bring several benefits. First, a unified framework can help addressing common pain points. For example, if most scenarios are using sequential optimization approaches, then given this information, we can actually devise a better way for uh, uh, job scheduling and prioritization. Another common point, point is learning induced system failures, um, which is due to machine learning inference uncertainties. And I'm going to come back to uh, learning induced system failures later in the presentation. And second, we would like to facilitate sharing. So imagine that if we can share data and models, we can actually help bootstrapping new scenarios faster by mitigating what's called the cold start problem for learning. Because we don't have to, uh, we don't have to start from scratch. Right? We actually have data and models to help us to move forward. Third, we would like to share computation resources. As I'm going to elaborate later, auto-tuning jobs are typically hard to provision for system operators because they are typically ad hoc and non-deterministic. So, so before I, I uh, present the Autosys framework, I'm going to talk about units or jobs uh, within Autosys. So we have two job abs abstraction uh, within, within Autosys, and they are tuners and trials. Tuners execute machine learning model training and inferencing uh, operations and also op uh, optimization solvers. We have implemented various tuners uh, based on popular auto-tuning algorithms, such as Hyperband, TPE, SMAC, Metis, and so on. And trials execute system uh, explorations and benchmarks. And then its job is actually uh, to, to accumulate training data sets. So you can imagine that by, uh, it, by, um, by doing system benchmarks on the various uh, configuration, we can actually start to learn about the system behavior. Okay. And there are, very, um, uh, there are two very interesting properties about, the, about these jobs. Right? First of all, these jobs are ad hoc, as they are typically triggered in response to systems and workload dynamics. So imagine that if a system is relatively static, right, it doesn't change that, that, that much over time, then maybe it's not a, um, maybe it's not a big deal to, uh, to, to do model retraining. Right? In other words, it should require less auto-tuning. But this is not the case for highly dynamic systems. Second of all, jobs are non-deterministic. For example, if a system is complex, we might need many uh, trials in order to build a adequate data set to capture the system behavior, right? Because the system is very, very complex. Furthermore, Trials might have different completion time. 
And this actually varies uh, from one system to another, right? And then one factor uh, in, in, uh, in affecting the complete completion time is the system warm up. So imagine in a database, you might need to warm up the cache before you can actually start uh, measure the, the, um, uh, the database performance. So here is an uh, overview of Autosys. It has centralized training plan, which hosts an array of machine learning tu tu tuners. And decentralized inference plan for system specific actuations and interactions. So we are going to look at uh, learning first, right? And then uh, here, uh, and then, and then uh, I'm going to highlight components involved in learning. Okay. So the, the, the first component that we're going to talk about uh, in training plan is called candidate generator. And uh, the candidate generator generates benchmark uh, candidates to iteratively explore the system behavior. This generation is based on assessing the current model progress. And then this is actually a very classic problem, right? And then there are three criteria um, includes exploration. And this is where we select candidates that we have high uncertainty of. Right? And then the second criteri criteria is called exploitation. And this is where we select candidates that are likely to be optimal. And finally, uh, we have the criteria called resampling. Right? And then uh, this is actually to select candidates that likely contain measurements uh, with noises and uh, maybe outliers. Right? And uh, you can imagine that uh, if you are trying to measure the latencies, Right. And then uh, latencies, as we know, right, uh, is very susceptible to, um, to noises and also the uh, outliers. And the second component in training plan is the trial manager. So from the candidates selected by candidate generator, the trial manager try to prioritize which candidate should be run first. This is very important, especially if you have very limited computation resources. The prioritization criteria is on how likely a candidate would help discover the optimum in the search space. So you can imagine this uh, as an iteratively uh, iterative uh, process, and then hopefully that by going through each iteration, we are going to be close to the optimum. And then there are a couple of uh, prioritization strategies. Right? For example, the Metas tuner uses Gaussian process to estimate and derive the information gain. The TPE tuner uses two Gaussian mixture models to estimate the likelihood of candidate being the optimum. Okay. So next, I'm going to highlight components involved in actuations. Right? And uh, actuations happens after we have sufficiently explored the system behavior. So one of the component in the inference plan is the rule engine. Okay. And as we know, being stochastic in nature, machine learning inference exhibits some degree of uncertainty. And this uncertainty can lead to learning induced system failures. And it's actually very hard to formally verify machine learning correctness because these models mathematically encode their knowledge so it's not very easily readable by human. So Autosys instead 
opt to validate machine learning and deep learning outputs with a rule-based engine. These validation rules are authored by operators and the rule engine function as a blacklist. And uh, in fact, in practice, we, we find the rule engine useful in a couple ways. First, it's useful to validate parameter value constraints and dependencies, such as the uh, value range constraint. Second, it prevents bad configurations that operators are already aware of from being applied to the production environment. Finally, it's useful to check system feedbacks. As one example, right, imagine that if the system behavior after actuation is significantly different from what's predicted, then all those things can raise a flag Right? And then maybe the operators can use this instance as a future training data set to improve the uh, model correctness. So here's a summary of key results from the production deployment of Autosys uh, in the context of uh, web search. We highlight two observations. First, while many scenarios have been continually tuned by experienced engineers over the years. It takes autosys only days and weeks to achieve a better or comparable system performance. Second, depending on the scenario, autosys has been used to auto-tune performance metrics ranging from latencies, CPU utilization, to search quality score. And we actually observe performance gain in all cases. So in the rest of this presentation, I would like to discuss several long-term lessons learned from these production deployments. The first lesson is that the learning costs have been higher than we expected over the years. And there are two major reasons. First, due to various types of system dynamics, the system that you try to model can change over time, which invalidates the model assumptions. And this also means that you need to continually retrain models. One source of dynamics is due to the fact that modern systems are designed to scale up and down elastically which changes the deployment setup and also the input output of the model. Another common source is the workload drift, which means that the model can see uh, inputs or, or data that it has not seen before. Even without system dynamics, learning large scale system deployments can be costly. A common practice is to set up a system on a testbed for learning. But the thing is, a lot of times, it's impossible for the testbed to match the scale and fertility of the production environment. So even if you can learn on testbed, can you actually use what's learned there uh, for the production environment? Right, this is a very good question. On the other hand, if the exploration happens in the uh, production environment, then you risk disruptions and also interruptions. So we have been investigating transfer learning as a way to reduce uh, model retraining. The second lesson is the pitfalls of human in the loop. As we know, our senior or experienced engineers and operators likely have a wealth of knowledge and experience on the target system, which can actually guide autosys optimization tasks. First, but the problem is human experts can inject biases into uh, training data sets. It can do so um, by providing a large number of labeled data points 
for certain search space regions. And this is actually possible because human experts are most likely already familiar with a certain regions in the search space from their, from their uh, experience. As a result, models would exhibit an uneven distribution of uncertainties over the search space. Second, human experts can write conflicting um, spec for optimization tasks. Specifically, uh, human experts can help autosys narrow down the search space by specifying the valid value ranges for uh, each configuration knobs. But then due to human errors, if the invalid space completely covers the valid space, then any outputs would effectively be rejected by autosys. The lesson is that not only do modern systems need to provide interfaces to accept external actuations, but they should have well-defined interfaces that abstract system measurements and logs in a way of facilitating learning. And the reason behind this is that many systems distribute configuration parameters and error messages over a set of not well-documented files and, and logs. And, and in fact, many system feedbacks are not natively learnable, such as stack trace and core dumps. And finally, many systems require customized measurement aggregation and cleaning right, due to the system design. And then these details um, should be... In conclusion, we report our experience in designing and operating learning augmented systems at Microsoft. This includes our framework and long-term operation lessons. Core components of Autosys are publicly available on GitHub at the link uh, on the slide. I would like to conclude my presentation by showing my contact information to answer any questions that you might have offline.